The model is not enough for a real estate company. I couldn't count how many examples I have of people helping other people in our world at EXP. Like I've lost track of it, the relationships that just get built. You've got people that are just willing to do whatever it takes to help other people. This yeah. company has changed my life. How do you think that's affected your business? This is episode 24, and I have a special guest with me today, Kevin Kaufman. All you got to do is look at his Facebook cover photo. It covers most of your accomplishments, right? It accomplishments definitely shows today. how much I like myself. There's no doubt about that. You were introduced to me as one of the most connected people in real estate. I think that's a cool title. When did you start the real estate team? I got licensed in like May of 07. Fred and I officially started working together 16 years ago. It was February of 2008 when he and I officially teamed up. How did that happen? Fred and I, so I know Fred because he's known my wife since like second grade. Okay. Literally, them and a group of friends grew up in the same neighborhood. She introduced us prior to me getting in real estate. He was already licensed. He and I started working together because he needed some help with some short sales. And he was leaving the country and I had just gotten a license. Okay. And fast forward a few months, we were both doing short sales at that point. We were both employing actually his brother as a part-time employee to help us with some of the, I'll call it administrative work that we didn't want to do. And we were both calling banks from home, working on short sales and it was sucked. And one day we just, we and another friend were sitting around together and, uh, we were like, what would it be like if we just sat together in the same office and tried to help each other? That conversation happened in January of 2008. And by February of 2008, we had rented an office and we had hired his brother on full time. And uh, we, we, went, we went at it. We started building. I mean, really, we, we didn't try to build. We were just trying to survive at that point. Eventually, right. we started building. Today, we're 50-50 partners because we had both come out of some situations in business where we both felt we were kind of the ones left sort of holding the, the responsibility bag. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we agreed to do was in fact, what we did is we got in the car one day we drove to, we drove to my hometown, Yuma, Arizona for some great Mexican food. And we talked about every listing that we both had at that point, which I think combined was 12. It's like not a lot of business. And we decided what we would compensate each other on for helping. And we also, so at that time, we, we basically said, Hey, if I brought in the business, I got 80% of the income. If he brought in the business, he got 80%. But our expenses of these two offices is paying his brother full time and whatever other expenses we had, we were going to split those 50, 50. So mm. nobody could live off the other person. And then what happened is over time, we started bringing those that number close, like we literally kept changing it. It went 75, 25, 70, 30, 65, 35, 60, 40, 55, 45. I'm not kidding. Like in over three year period, we went to finally got to 50, 50. The thing that we agreed to also is if we generated a piece of business because that we are business together, that was 50, 50. Mm. But early on, everything was either my deal or his deal. And the other person was just compensated basically for helping out. It's like a production-based yeah. model, like, which I see, you know, I mean, how many teams fall apart because they're not, but they're doing the 50-50 right off the bat and one person's whole, bringing all the business and one person's just catching all the money. So that's interesting that that's the way that that started. So now where's your team now? We've gone through so many iterations. Um, at the end of the day, we expanded. We're at one point, we had probably had a hundred agents, not probably, we had a hundred agents on our roster at one point. Wow. Over like seven states um we're mostly concentrated in phoenix arizona though now we still have a couple agents in colorado and one part-time agent on the roster in tennessee everyone else is here in the phoenix area and we have call it 15 agents it's a fairly hands-off business fred and i are a little more hands-on this year and when i say that i mean every week i run a sales meeting fred and i run a sales meeting together we run a meeting with the two people that are, I'll call it in leadership. So like our director of sales and our director of administration and operations. And then I'm on a, another Zoom as well, once a week for an hour for the team. So I'm probably working three to five hours, four to four to five, four to six hours a week in regards to the real estate team. And so is Fred. And um, 
you know, do a couple hundred units and it's a good, it's not the most productive business we've ever had. You know, we're going to do a couple hundred units. We're not going to do 500 again. I mean, we've done over 500. That's not really my desire to, to grow it to that though. Mm -hmm. we won't prevent, you know, if Joe and Jill, uh, the, the two leaders on our team grow it that big, then I'm not, I'm not going to stop it from, yeah. from getting, there. but you know, we've, um, you know, it's definitely evolved over the years and, uh, I love it. It's awesome. That's awesome. So when I first met you, you know, the way I met you was watching YouTube videos. I did watch the videos of you, um, that you were making with Fred with, uh, when you guys left Keller Williams, that was the first introduction, but then reached out, you know, we were talking about EXP at that time. I feel like you had kind of created this hybrid model of a team to fit into EXP, but then, you know, we, we did create a, a hybrid and, and we've moved back a little bit. We, we partnered with a company called place about, I don't know, I think we made the decision about a year and a half ago, actually, but it's been about 13 months, 14 months since we officially launched with them. And with that was like, Hey, we got to grow again. We, we actually have to grow this out agent count for this to really make sense for us. And, and part of the thing with place was, was about having more systems and backend sort of services and support uh, to allow Fred and I to continue to do more of what we really like doing, which is kind of growing our community within EXP while mm -hmm. still maintaining and, and even growing the, the real estate sales business. And so yeah. So, you know, we've had a lot of different iterations on our business. Fred and I, the thing, the thing that I'm probably most proud of, if you will, isn't necessarily like an accomplishment or an award that we've won. It's that we've always been willing to challenge what we thought was right. We've always been willing mm. to challenge ourselves on the way we do things, you know, whether that's the splits that we pay our agents, how we generate our leads, support that we offer, like you name it we've been willing to challenge ourselves and to force ourselves and, and then make tough decisions and not just be married to doing things a certain way, because that's the way we all, we've always done them. And so it's, you know, our, we've had a few iterations for sure over the last 16 years. That's really cool. I know that how I see you was not, you didn't try to sell me anything. You didn't even try to recruit me. I called you, you know, like what you were doing was what most people want to be able to do when it comes to, growing an organization or a team. So what do you think the key to that is? Like, I mean, listen, people join people like there's different. Here's what I always say. Now I love EXP. I, I want to be really clear. EXP, the model is the best in the business. In my opinion, I don't think there's a better model. In fact, I'm convinced hundred percent it's the best model, but that's not enough. The model is not enough for a real estate company because right. if it was, we'd already have 500,000 agents or a million agents. And we don't, it, it's about the people. It's always about the people. You can copy a model. You can't, you can't duplicate the people. Yeah. I can teach you about the model. I mean, I could show you all day why it's better for you. Like the numbers are the number that's math. That's actually yeah. not hard at all. Whether or not somebody can see it though, that's a psychological question. And they've got to, you know, someone's got to be able to be open enough, open-minded enough about their business and have a desire to grow or to be around a community in order to be able to see it. And so, yeah. you know, that's, I guess that's my little, my little spiel on that. I'm not sure I actually answered your question, but. What you do such a good job of, like, and what I'm guilty of sometimes is like, if somebody asks me about it and then I go in, instead of being like you and being curious, I start giving them the wrong answer to the question that they asked because they weren't asking about the structure of VXP. They were asking about the community or they were asking about how it would solve a problem for them. And I don't even know what their problem is. And I'm telling them the answer before I'm not even, you know what I mean? We got to find out people's problems. We got, right. we, have to, we have to consult with them. You know, one of my, one of my friends and mentors, and I know you know him too, is John Cheplak. And John always says like, dude, the, best way to sell or, or to recruit is you got to give people an experience of what it's like to work with you before they work with you because they don't, they're asking questions like what's the split, what's the cap, what's the, yeah. what's the rev share plan, what's the stock. That's all stuff they could find easily. Like that's right. not the real question. 
That's never the real question. I think that's a challenge for a lot of people. Like that little piece is that they ask you that question and you blah, throw up all over them what they already could have found on the internet with a simple Google search. Yep. So you say that when you said EXP, the model, and then you said it was about the people, like maybe give me an example of that, like what the people mean to you or the people you're connected with. I can give you an example before. I'm going to now, I, I've let you Go talk. I want to say one thing about my experience with EXP is when I went to sign up. So I got a new sign up in the front yard with a blanket over it. And I got all my st stickers, signs stickered out, you know, all 80 of them, new stickers on them. And I got all the websites ready to push one button, you know, on each one, get everything switched over. I mean, I'm so organized and so ready to make this transition. And it was supposed to be at 830 that we were swapping our licenses. And I got a phone call at like 845 from the broker's assistant saying that his power was out. And I mean, I just lost it, completely lost it. But I really believe that that was like the moment that I really learned a lot about EXP and the people at EXP and the phone calls that I got, that I received and like people actually saying they care. J just the advice and the things that people left in my voicemail, because I couldn't answer all the calls that I got, you know, from people I didn't know. Your network of people in the things that they said to me on those voicemails, it was like, I found my place, right? Just the people's attitudes. They were just so good. Yeah, dude, I think that's a great example. And, um, you know, when I say the people or it's, uh, I mean, the fact that like, listen, you and I talk offline way more than we do online, right? You know, if I needed help with something in my business right now, I could, I know I could call you and be like, Bob, help me with this. What's going on? Yeah. Or, or vice versa. Right. I have, I don't, I couldn't count how many examples I have of people helping other people in our world at EXP. Like I've lost track of it. The relationships that just get built, you've got people that are just willing to do whatever it takes to help other people. Like to me, yeah. that's, that's just, that's important. That's something I look for in life. I think the way EXP is set up, the way our business model is set up to actually encourage that. It just yeah. kind of puts that on, on overdrive. And right. so people plug in, it's pretty, it's just pretty amazing. I think of like our, uh, one of our, one of our executives, Michael Valdez, Michael worked at another company called Realogy. I guess now it's called anywhere for 17 years. And then he came to work for EXP about four years ago. And Every day for probably the first six months, somebody said to him, like, this company has changed my life. I'm so glad you're here. This yeah. company has changed my life. And he was like, I was at this other company, which by the way, it was a great company. He loved his time. He had a great experience at Realogy slash anywhere. It's like, but never in 17 years did anybody ever say to me, this company changed my life. And every day that I've been in EXP, somebody has said that to me. That's really and cool. Like eventually you just start to realize like, wow, like it makes a big impact. Like I'll, I'll tell you too. Another thing is because of our model and this is not to go, Oh, rev share is amazing, but it is, you know, I, I dealt with some serious uh, health issues last year and I pretty much didn't work last year in 2023. Now in 2023, where most people in our industry's income was down, my income was actually higher. And I didn't even work for the, for probably 75% of the year. And I could give you hundreds of examples, if not thousands of examples of things like that. And so that, I think that's what I mean. That's really cool. The part about connecting with other people. So I called you with, you know, I was a little stressed out or I have people coming at me from all these different angles and, and you connected me with Chris and I had a conversation with him and it's like, he's just on some other, he's on another, he's in another place. Like, you know. But he made me feel like we're just looking at it the wrong way. You know, like there's something else to look at here. There's another piece right here that you're not looking at. You know, it was a really interesting conversation. But to be able to connect with people like that, where I never would have made that connection before. And there's been several like that that I, I really appreciate about the company. You know, and I, I'm not like really one to plug in, you know, like that's been that's always been my challenge, you know, like at any company, you know, with referrals or with you know, the social events, you know, I, I'm kind of the one that hides 
off to the side and I don't want to be, you know, I mean, it's just the way I've always been. Last year, our referrals for EXP, just the referrals alone were like, I mean, I think we did, we closed 16 transactions from EXP referrals. So it might have something to do with not a lot of agents here in the area, I guess. I don't know. Maybe we're quick to the draw or whatever it is, but I mean, that's unheard of. I mean, that's without like getting into like a popularity contest. And then the rep share, it exceeds what I pay to be there. So like, it's, it's a big deal. I mean, one day, you know, it might be like yours where I make more in a down year than everybody, you know, that I did the year before without working. But my buddy Nolly says, when people tell him like, oh, you know, I'm good. I'm in a hundred percent company. He's like, why would you settle for a hundred percent? Cutting yourself short. You're still paying to be there. I feel like a lot of people that haven't seen it need to see it. The thing is, the way people see it is is through through other people. Like that's the way yeah. this company grows. It's through relationships with us as agents. No different than like a real estate brokerage's client base. Like I'm talking, their buyers and sellers doesn't grow because of the company. It grows because of the agents. Yeah, and the relationships that the agents have on the ground. Well, the same thing is true for growing an agent count. It actually grows through agents. That's why some companies will incentivize their top agents to be there. And they'll give them stuff like free caps and free offices because what they know is like, I can take a loss on Bob, but if I can then tell people that, hey, listen, the number one guy here is is at our office, you should be here too. Like that's actually valuable in the real estate recruiting world, in the brokerage world. And so all EXP did was flip the script on it and go, we know that. And because of that, as agents, we're just going to give you the opportunity. And instead of like having a a multi-layered system where there's like franchise owners and there's like regional people, it's like, no, half the money comes to, comes to the company so we can be profitable. Half of the money is going to go to agents to reward you for building the company. Yeah. And that's, to me, that's just a better way of doing things. The thing that I've learned, and I, you know, I learned this a lot also from from my buddy Chris that that we've talked about, is you just gotta you gotta shoot your shot, man. Like yeah. jab, 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 right hook. Some people will come to you like you came to me not because, not because I called you open like Bob. Do you know about EXP Realty? That wasn't it. You called me because I put out something that you saw and you thought was valuable, and then you know you checked out some other stuff, and then. We right. talked and I was like, well, dude, how can I help your business? And then eventually I was like, do you want to join me at EXP? I probably, I should have got you to join sooner, but right. also it's part of my game that I'm trying to get better at. Right. And yeah. it's just a matter, like, here's the thing I believe. I be, again, I, I believe that our model is the best in the industry. And so if I believe that, then why, why am I not sharing that with more people? I want that for you. Like I want my friends to experience the things I've experienced because of the company. I wasn't ready when I talked to you the first, I, I think like I had a bad day the first time I talked to you. Yeah, you know, I was remember. Like a, it yep. was a bad day. There was something going on. I'm like, but then it wasn't until I had a really bad day that I was ready. Or maybe it was beyond that because it was someone else that was working here that saw it and said, we got to do this, you know? Like, um, but I've been, that's what's been going through my head a lot, man. I'm, I'm like there, I'm there. Like I know that I'm there. And I know I want to help more people. And I know that it's been great to me. You just got to remember what you have is valuable and people should want to be around you and want to learn from you and want to yeah. collaborate with you. And as soon as you remember that, it's kind of like, um, there's a guy, there's a guy here locally, a friend of mine, his name's Russell Shaw. And Russell told another friend of mine, like, Hey, how good is your listing appointment? Like what's your consultation or presentation? Is it good? And he was like, yeah. And he goes, bullshit. I know it's not good enough. It's not good. If I, cause if it was good or good enough, you'd be presenting it so much more. He's like, you don't even believe in it yet. That shook his world, man. That shook this guy's world. 